Uh, response video. Yeah. Uh, due in the morning. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so she apparently did a couple of these videos. I didn't, I didn't know she did any videos. But anyway, um, so I just found them because I saw her. She made a comment, another one of her snarky comments on Anna Kontavod's video. Um, so apparently she embraces those videos. Um, but anyway, um, so the first one, she's doing this hate crime thing. Um, and she's, uh, the word evil is, if you use the word evil, you're religious. If you use the metaphor of Davy and Goliath, you're religious. <laughs> so apparently they, they really must rename the atom, right? Because that's a religious metaphor. And, um, so obviously physicists are religious. Um, you know, it's just the, the same old word play. Just play games with these words like this means something. And, um, you know, the, the videos are such a lie, you know, you know, she's sitting here saying Ephilism is a hate crime and, and making the accusation that Ephilists hate living things, and that's not the argument at all. It's the very fact that we value living things and their sentience and their welfare that we think something needs to be done because you're squandering and wasting too much of their suffering to play your badminton or whatever gets you off. Um, that your ambitions are trivial and silly, and um, if it was in your power, like an Adolf Hitler, so if somebody gave you power, what would you do with it? You would um, impose suffering on trillions of sentient organisms, so you could what? Go bowling? What? 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 Make inarticulate videos? <laughs> <laughs> strangle language to pieces. She even goes through a whole spiel about, you know, she uses the line, mental midgets, intellectual midgets, and then defends, you know, any offense to midgets, and so wastes three minutes talking about how she doesn't mean to offend midgets, and that other people have offended midgets already, so it's okay if she offends midgets. And, um, you know, you're just like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, can't you come up with some other insult? Call me a jerk? Um, I call you a horse's ass, can't I? Yeah, I call you a horse's ass. How's that? Or you have an ass like a horse, something like that. Face like a horse? I don't know. Yeah, because horses can't be offended. They don't speak English. Ha ha. So yeah, maybe you should insult things that can't speak English. Or your native tongue. Um, but anyway, I'm just pathetic. So anyway, let's just forget about that video. It's a waste of time. So then her second video is, why do we not miss the Martians, question mark. So she's playing with my point that um, if there was something precious and it was absent, um, or if there was some way to generate it and it didn't exist and you could make it, um, probably not the best thing. Um, the point is, is we, we could automatically recognize the urgency if something is being harmed or is at risk or in harm's way, at jeopardy. It's automatic. You, you can't miss it. It's glaring. But the value is not so glaring. It's certainly not glaring in the fact that we don't sit there and imagine what could be and then lament its non-existence. Sort of like you could see a laughing baby and you could say, well, wouldn't it be nice to have laughing baby everywhere? Just laughing babies floating about. But realistic, you know, if there was laughing baby, there'd also be shitting baby. And there'd be shit all over the place. And there'd be crying baby and stinky baby. All the other crap that goes with baby. And so you'd kind of know, yeah, maybe not. So the whole point of that thought experiment, this idea of not missing something, is just acknowledging, just recognizing that there is this psychological phenomenon that if harm is taken away, you, you appreciate its absence. If value is taken away, if you know, positive is missing, you don't really miss it. It's just not the same kind of gravity. So I guess I could I could reanalogize it by saying if I if I had a torturing a person on a gurney and they're being tortured 
and then I bargained with you. You know, to stop the torture, you had to eliminate from the existence of the human consciousness baseball. And then I did football, and I did soccer. I mean, how much of your, what you value in this world would you actually torture someone to have? How much of our experience means much more than just crude gratifications? So anyway, um, yeah, so that's up, you know, and then she's always trying to imply that there's something dogmatic or religious in perceiving um, evolution as a process where you start with something that's just replicating for no good reason, just because the chemistry made it possible, and that it replicates on an island planet, so to speak, and that it does so now parasitically or cannibalistically. And to acknowledge that truth, to state that truth, is somehow a religious dogma. Um, because obviously these are not flattering things. And obviously when something's not a good thing, when it's not a good mechanism, uh, it's not an efficient or clean or precise mechanism, when you can see the obvious flaws in it, the obvious irregularities, the obvious uh, dents, the obvious brokenness, um, it's only rational to look at it and say, what do we do about that? It's just rational thing to do. Um, and she doesn't think that's rational. We should not be judgmental of the God nature. And it is her God, quite obviously. She has dogmatically accepted that nature must be as it is. Uh, it is not for us to judge. It is not us for us to augment um, or to manipulate to better function or better purpose or better efficiency because it's her God. So clearly she's the one with the religion, the dogma of nature knows best. And that's clearly what she's saying. Clearly she's saying nature is somehow in a category that is beyond our judgment that we're not allowed. We can, we can say somebody's farts smell, <laughs> but we can't say that nature's cruel. It's just stupid. So I will play this video. It's the shortest of the bunch, which is good. And it's so overtly a lie, right, from the, right on the title. Um, will my consciousness be repeated exactly in another, and I imagine the future or something, Another person in the future. I have never, ever made the claim that I am going to be exactly replicated in the future. I've made exactly the opposite contextual clarification. Every time I talk about this subject, I always, always point out that I am not saying exact. So it's just another lie. I mean, <laughs> it's all these people have. They have to distort and pervert. I had, I had a crank caller guy, you know, a nice enough guy today call me and you know he said oh I saw a couple of your videos and yeah I think you're pretty cool and blah 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 and now here's my life story and I'm pretty cool and I'm not cool just because of some things that happen and but yeah you'd really like me because I was really cool or I could have been really cool well anyway he's just doing that bullshit and in between there you know uh, he says something like um, uh, you know equating ethelism with suicide and again, you're just, you're just, it's like, what, what are you, the subject isn't suicide, it's procreation, idiot. Not having babies, it's not about killing yourself, or not having fun, or blowing your brains out, or, I don't know, pulling all your hair out, or, it's not about, nothing, no, there's nothing. It's about having fucking babies, it's about playing goddamn God and thinking you know what's best for them. Yeah, it's that obnoxious behavior that we're critiquing and saying, don't do that. Because the harm you cause um, is real, and if you really think about it, if you really think about it, you wouldn't want somebody to do it to you. You wouldn't want somebody else rolling the dice. If you were going to have dice rolled, you'd want to be rolling them, right? Right. I mean, you wouldn't put your house on the line and have have those dice in somebody else's hands. You just goddamn wouldn't. So anyway. So we'll play this video. 
It will be horrible, so prepare yourself. Do 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 do. Free video music. Free video. Hello. Hello. Imagine somebody tells you, uh, my consciousness will be repeated exactly as it is, as I have it now, in some person in the future. Yeah, well, if I imagine that, I'd say, gee, that sounds crazy. That's the, I don't know, it would take like a bazillion permutations to get an exact copy, I think. Like a zillion. <laughs> or more, you know. Even if that person doesn't have the same name. <laughs> then, the first... Oh, so they're exactly like me, except they don't have exactly the same name. Okay, but that's the only difference. Okay. Thing you will say to this conversation partner uh, is, well, if that person has a different name, then his, con his or her consciousness, depending on the sex of your conversation partner, uh, will not be the same. If Look, you know, this isn't that complicated, okay? You think you're one in seven billion, and you think you're so distinct and unique, and that everything you feel is just yours privately. You only, you're the only one who has any feelings or any thoughts. And that's just crap. All right, I have a huge ego, but I don't think I'm one in a million. <laughs> I really don't. I think there's lots of people who have thought what I've thought or felt what I've felt, and maybe it's not, you know... 99%, but maybe it's 82%, or maybe it's 78%, but whatever it is, it's a big giant percent of the same kind of experiences, generally speaking, and the same kind of, you know, perception of those experiences. They're sitting there in their chair now, and they're saying, gee, you know, my life is just kind of this drib drabby bullshit, you know, got to do these tasks and these chores. Uh, yeah, I don't even feel good, and you know, I take a nap, and I do this, and you know, and they're just kind of mushing through the bullshit, and they, you know, they go outside and they hear the birds, and they think about reptiles, and they think about dinosaurs, and you know, they look at things and they say, this is really ugly, and you know, there's a cat's got a broken leg, and yeah, you know, it's e -e 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 -e. and they go e -e -e -e. so it's just outrageous for somebody to say, yeah, we fit into categories. Frankly, you know, I can cut you all into two categories. Cool people and assholes. Guess what category you're in? <laughs> that person has a different name. Pause. She has to reboot her computer. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't even know what this video style is. I'm going to talk to you from three rooms away. Well, that goes and all that. Then, if your conversation partner tells you, well, these are details, but um, uh, my consciousness, the way... Yeah, it really doesn't matter whether the bitch has got a little funky green scarf or a pink scarf or what. Who cares? It's just not a, re it's not a really important detail. I feel uh, will be repeated. He, he or she doesn't say may. Uh, we'll be repeated in a Whatever. You don't think like the chimpanzees look at us and say, man, they all look alike. At the zoo, you think they're like saying, oh yeah, that one's a special, unique human being. Oh, that's a special, unique human being. No, they're just going, asshole, 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 asshole. Oh, cool guy. Asshole, 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 asshole. That's all they're doing. Okay? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a cliche, but you all look alike to me. It's, it's a reality, okay? You only see distinction because you got like uh, uh, you're an obsessive disorder. So you see silly things like, oh, that person has bigger ears than me. Or, oh, that person has a better looking, you know. Oh, that person's vagina is less skanky than mine. Yeah, so you just keep playing that game. But it's a stupid little game you're playing. You're not all that fucking special. Another uh, person in the future. Seen one horse's ass, you've seen them all. Then, you must say, uh, the experiences you go through in life are what makes you, you. It is not possible that any person in the future will have the same experiences. 
Yeah, and again, there's no one's making that argument, so this is just such a lie. You can't quote me making the argument that it's the same everything. No, just that it's substantially similar. And that's all that matters, it's substantially similar. Uh, I mean, this isn't that complicated. It's just like imagining somebody being like me, uh, finding out, uh, you know, they have a brain tumor. And I can imagine that. I can imagine what they're experiencing, what they go through, because we have common grounding. We have a common, you know, we have a common sensibilities within ranges. There's people who like tacos, and there's people who like sushi, and there's people who like uh, potato chips. They're cool people. Is that you have had in your life until now. I have to open a bracket here on a topic which deserves a separate video entirely, and that is the topic of hard determinism. I have made a video on this topic earlier, link in the description, where I showed why, even with the deterministic action of the classical mechanical forces and the interaction of particles in the universe, because of nonlinear algorithms, Nonlinear algorithms. All right, so there we go. Nonlinear algorithms mean you will do something against your better judgment. You will do something not consistent with your life experience because of nonlinear algorithms. And therefore, you're, not, you're free. That makes you free. When you don't act logically, sensibly, and consistently, you are free to be an asshole. Huh? <laughs> you get real. None of this shit is free. Nothing, nothing in this picture is free. None of it. Not one little tiny little photon in here is free. You silly person, you. I didn't know she was going to get silly. Er. Right in the middle of a silly video, she was going to decide to, Hey, wait! Hey, time out! I have to get even sillier! Nonlinear algorithms make us free to be wrong and stupid and to behave inconsistent with our sensible education. No, they don't. I mean, really and other mathematics of nature discovered by complexity theory. Which... Oh, yes, complexity theory, <laughs> yes, invented by Mr. Daffy, <laughs> complexity duck. Which is from a modern science founded by the Brussels School of Scientists. Oh, the Brussels School of Scientists, there you go. Brussels Sproutius tells us the truth. I don't think so. I think it's a crock of shit. I don't think you're interpreting it correctly. I think that's it. Most of them are mathematicians. Google it. All right. Yeah, mathematicians will prove that the universe isn't physics and isn't deterministic. Oh, I see. No, I don't see. No, I don't think you have any evidence of anything ever being free ever in the history of forever. Show me a free thing, please. No such thing, silly person. It is clear that it is impossible at one moment, for example, the Big Bang, for the future structure and function of the universe to be determined, let alone life and how life will evolve. All right, so how life evolves. So she just, she just extended that theory. So she went further than just that, the Big Bang. She's now saying that when the first cell replicated, it wasn't determined the, what the outcome would be. And if I set up exactly the same circumstances and put the cell right there in exactly the same place, she's arguing that it, somehow it would turn out different. Why? Because these assholes in Brussels don't know what pi is, and they don't realize they can't use pi in their equation, or their equation turns to shit. And they don't know what significant decimal places are. So they have a school, and they don't know what significant digits are. Yeah. But that's her science. Because why? Because it's religious-y sounding. It gives us back our free will. Yay! So it's science. No. It's crap. 
To cut a long story short, we may use our imperfect language and say, nature is created. Well, why did you say nature is created? Where was, where was the, the irregularities that you're talking about? How come you didn't say ngukro? You know, how come you didn't say birdie? How come you didn't say some other word? How come you said nature? I think you said it because you know the word. And that's the only reason why you said it. I'm betting, <laughs> I'm betting determinism says your ass ain't going to get any smaller. I'm betting. You must understand that phrase in the proper abstract way because there isn't an object called nature which does something. Yeah, she keeps saying stuff like this. She's saying life isn't life and we know life is life. Nature isn't nature. So physical forces that are the definition of nature, which are forces, aren't forces. <clears throat> And forces, let's say, aren't mechanics. She thinks it's something else going on. There's magic, random, fluffy, fluffy. And even if there was random, magic, fluffy, fluffy, how would that make us free? That would make us just broken. That wouldn't make us free. It would make us broken. It would mean that we don't act logically. We don't act by order. Uh, of conditions, that conditions, preconditions don't decide future conditions. So it's just enter, it's just adding chaos. How is chaos an advantage? Explain to me how chaos is an advantage. Yeah, that, that would be the good one. Because if you're going to say there is no determinism, the only thing you're going to have then mixed into the determinism, the determinism of that I will always say determinism and I'm not going to say kitty, um, but let's just say, you know, I get through my whole life always saying determinism when I mean determinism and not saying kitty when I mean determinism. <laughs> you know, the 99.99% the, the of our existence that's going to seem quite ordered and regular, even if that 1% was irregular or outside of some boundary, again, what would the irregular, what would the irregularity be except chaos? It would just be pollution. Pollution by anti-logic. Why, why, would, why would you think that's better? So 99% determinism plus 1% dog do. And that's somehow an improvement in your logical brain. Your horse's ass of a brain. Midget horse ass. By this we mean everything, the new emergent objects that appear, with their emergent properties, one of which is DNA. And the following complexity is the human brain, a quotation about which I will read in a moment, will make your conversational partner realize that his or her statement, my consciousness will be exactly repeated. Exactly repeated. Again, who says that? Who? Where has anybody said that? You're just a liar. A horrible liar. You really are. An evil liar. It's nothing but an embarrassment. So, I have to... No, no. It's an embarrassment when you lie in front of everybody and just keep doing it and then pretend you have something called credibility or honor or integrity. I mean, this is... You're disgusting. You're such a liar. Second this from Eric Fromm's book, The Anatomy of Human Distractedness, where from, contrary to the title, proves that there is no neurological center in the brain which causes aggression. No neurological center in the brain which causes aggression. Yeah, well, it's a consequence of hormones. It's a dispositional condition. So it disposes the brain to be... Uh, you know, and also dispose, you know, emotionally uh, excited. And it is that emotional excitement uh, combined with some paranoia. So paranoia might not be a center in the brain, but I think obviously our emotions like guilt, um, envy, um, you know, they're all tied to, uh, you know, an, an elemental part of the neurology tags words and tags concepts with those emotional taints so those words trigger the emotional response the adrenals and the rest of it so again 
I haven't made any argument that there's any such thing. So why is this in the middle of a video where you are pretending to have a conversation with a person who is supposed to be a facsimile of me? <sighs> who knows? I, I, do you have any clue? I don't, I don't know what she's up to. That humans have evolved and are characterized by one the ever decreasing determination of behavior by instincts and two the ever decreasing de determination of behavior by instincts reflexes all your brain is a reflex everything you understand and know is a reflex every word triggers reflex it's all reflexes so you don't even understand what a brain is made out of that's what a neuron is a neuron is a reflex by the growth of the brain and particularly the growth of the brain again there's absolutely no proof that the growth of the brain has anything to do with understanding or perception or intelligence none of the neocortex which is three times as large as that of even the hominid ancestors three times as large uh, based on skull size <laughs> yeah so yeah that's that's yeah that's all you do right is you measure how thick a skull is and you're going to draw determined uh, draw inferences um, fine go ahead and play that game it's okay with me um, and, but none of that demonstrates that um, we evolved any of that incrementally and we can, I think, clearly see the only difference between us and the other simians isn't our emotional character or our aggression or our native drives or our native emotions, that the only difference is, is vocabulary. They can't learn enough words. That's it. The only limiting factor. And a truly fantastic number of interneuronal connections which result in your character and in your consciousness. Here it uh, <clears throat> consciousness. So she thinks consciousness is something only humans are doing. She doesn't think it's something every other mammal is doing for certain, and many other organisms are doing. Well, she's probably, you know, still is a meat eater, right? So, friend of two be serious. <laughs> Is a moment to say that your consciousness is not a little homunculus sitting somewhere in your brain judging the decisions and thoughts that your brain has, but it is the whole network from the interconnections that the neurons make. From consults R.B. Livingston's Brain Circuitry and Neurology. Wow. I mean, so again, why is this in this video? I've made more videos on that subject than you have or anybody else has for that matter about the fact that there is no person inside of you making decisions. Well, he gives a quotation from Judson Herrick's book, Brains of Rats and Man. Judson Herrick has tried to give an approximate idea of the potentialities of neuronal circuits. A quotation. Every neuron of the cerebral cortex is enmeshed in a tangle of very fine fibers of great complexity, some of which come from very remote parts. It is probably safe to say that the majority of cortical neurons are directly or indirectly connected with every cortical field. This is the anatomical basis of cortical associational processes. The intercon Whatever. <laughs> yeah, bullshit there. Okay, that's all I'll say. Um, you know, neurons are axioms and all this other, you know, axons and whatever the other thing are. And you want to play with the interior of neurons. I don't think that's where intelligence lies. But go ahead, play your game. You might as well get to, like, microtubules and pretend they're, you know, magical. Magical tubules. Sections of these associational fibers form an anatomical mechanism which permits, during a train of cortical associations, numbers of different functional combinations of cortical neurons that far surpass any figures ever suggested by the astronomers in measuring the distances of stars. It yeah, whatever. Again, you know, you can, you can add up every 
you know, you could do the circumference of the neurons. You know, some of the neurons are very long. And then you could do the interior circumferences. And you could play all kinds, do the circumference of the nucleus, and do all kinds of bullshit like that, and say you're, you found all kinds of, of storage space for data. But it would just be bullshit. <laughs> the capacity for making this sort of combination and recombination of the nervous elements that determines the practical value of the system. If a million cortical nerve cells were connected one with another in groups of only two neurons each in all possible combinations, the number of different patterns of interneuronic connections thus provided will be expressed by 10 to the power of 2,783,000. Right, so that's exactly what she's doing. She's counting microtubules, the structure inside of cells that allow them to divide the nucleus, keep the structure of the cell. So she's counting the girders in a building or something and saying something like, um, I can't think of a proper analogy, but I mean, she's just taking stuff that has nothing to do with, well, you know, saying it has something to do with the traffic on the street. It just doesn't, it's, there's, there's, not, there's nothing relevant here. The interior biology of the neuron has nothing to do with um, either our consciousness or the processing capacity of our brains, and you don't need to do this nonsense. Two neurons equal this preposterous crap. Um, to get to the simple fact that we have plenty of neurons to figure out that it could be a very elaborate computing device. You know, the billions of neurons. Billions. And if they each have 20 connections, you can already make a big enough number to say, wow, that's a lot of power. So what is this whole argument for? What, what is, is this part of your God delusion? What, what does this mush mean? You've cured consciousness, you've figured it out, you, you're going to tell us this is what it is, based on this mush? Nice. Pathetic. On the basis of the known structure of the cortex, the number of intercellular connections that are anatomically present and available for use in a short series of cortical neurons of the visual area simultaneously excited by the retinal image would far exceed the... 10 to the power of 2,783,000 already mentioned and a horse is a horse, of course, of course, unless, of course, the horse is misread and such. I mean, come on. Horses are horses, monkeys is monkeys, zebras is zebras, whatever, lions is lions, humans is humans. It's not this complicated, all right? You want to pretend that that makes a difference. It makes a difference whether my fingernail is this long or half is that long and so that's the whole difference in the human it's because the fingernail is a little longer a little shorter I mean this little bibble babble means nothing we all know what uh, you know if you're a guy you know what it is to have nuts in a penis if you're a woman you know pretty much what a vagina is this is not that complicated so keep pretending it's all mystical and wonderful. You're fucking God because you have very special little brain tubules. Is that it or something? What the fuck are you trying to tell me? I don't know what it is to be a human being. God, this is just so fucking stupid. The theoretically possible combinations in groups of two only. Close the quotation. For comparative purposes, Livingston adds... Recall that the number of atoms in the universe is estimated to be about 10 to the power of 66. But the question is that no consciousness uh, is exactly the same as any other consciousness. Every uh, and again, that wasn't the argument. The argument was is that it was like twins you know, were born and um, they could be very similar in a lot of ways because they have the same genetic dispositions. And they can, you know, they'll vary, but they'll have a consistency within ranges. And uh, just because of their biology, just because they have a similar biology. And we often have similar life experiences that uh, tend us to be, um, to draw us to similar conclusions, to similar perceptions, to similar sensibilities, to liking the same kind of conversation or entertainment or um, food.
And we can see that in people. We can see people of like taste, and we can put them in a category, we can describe them. Um, so this is not all that complicated. Consciousness is unique um, in, and will not be repeated, not in the future. Yeah, whatever. Again, that wasn't the argument. The argument was merely an argument to understand empathetically yourself, to recognize your stake in the future. That even if you don't exist personally, somebody who will be a lot like you is likely to exist. And maybe many people who are very much like you will exist. And they'll live in that world that you're going to create. And just like you would have appreciated if the previous generation took life a little more seriously than they did, they might appreciate you taking it more serious than you're taking it. And that's the purpose of the argument. You have perverted and distorted because you're a nasty, skanky, evil horse's ass. Not in the past, not at present, because everybody is unique. So I would advise you to... Yeah, so is every snowflake. But we know what snow is. And it's all pretty much snowy. Yeah, the differences aren't worth a difference. They don't mean anything. It just doesn't. To tell your conversation partner if he or she insists that his consciousness will be exactly repeated. But... Well, again, who has said that? Who has said that? All right, no one. So you're just arguing with a straw person. Oh, I see. Well, if your conversational partner asks you, is there anything worse than a big, fat horse's ass? Maybe you should say, well, a double horse's ass. Yeah, it's probably worse. To tell him not to worry, that will not happen. He can, he or she, uh, can... Um continue living his life, his or her life, until he or she dies, um, and not to worry anymore. Yeah, don't worry, it's only going to be those people living in the future who don't matter. So again, she's just kind of just, she, you know, don't worry. So she, she, she understands what the argument is. The argument is there's something to worry about. That those people, as much as you don't think you think yourself so much more superior than them, you're really not. And if you really recognized the truth of the matter, you could recognize that those people in the future are going to do exactly what you're doing now. And whatever vulnerability or poison or stench you put into them, okay, it's going to mean as much as if it happens to you. Their broken leg isn't going to be any different than your broken leg. Wow. I mean, it really is stupid when I, you know, this is what I have to go on the internet to argue with people about. You know, suffering sucks and that your broken leg isn't more important than their broken leg. Fuck. You people are just, I mean, how can I not call this wrong, wrong, but it's just, it's pathetic. about somebody else in the future that will feel the same. That will not happen. There will be, again, people who will think in a very different uh, manner, uh, but uh, it will not be the same. The brain that has been built by genes um, is very complex, and uh, it is a system, it is the uh, integration... Mm, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's very complex, and yet it seems that all people who get broken legs behave very similarly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great consistency. When you stick a pencil in something's eye, the reaction seems very consistent from eye to eye. Fuck. Of all the uh, parts of the brain, all the neurons, and different uh, parts of the brain have uh, different functions. Um, yes, there's jackasses and assholes and cool people. That is what our consciousness is. There is not one little homunculus 
uh, in the brain. Uh, again, liar. Who's who's arguing? There is. Who? Yeah, that's right. Liar. In that takes decision or watches how the brain or what the brain has uh, decided. Right, but there are consistent programs from human to human. We have classes of people. We describe them. You're a huckleberry or whatever that guy's joke was, right? Yeah, you're a redneck. We put them in categories. They're so fucking cliché. We have the word cliché to describe the cliché nature of the human organism's function. And then judges it. The interconnections, the integration of uh, all the neurons and synapses and so on, that is what our consciousness is. So, so this has nothing to do with the argument, right? So she strawmans the argument by making some accusation of exactitude as if somebody doesn't understand that humans are nuanced even though they say that very thing and that they're eccentric um, but that the eccentricities do pattern. They fall into categories. Uh, what, a hundred categories? A thousand categories? How many really distinguishing factors are there? There really aren't that many. Okay, there aren't trillions of important categorical um, attributes that human beings manifest. Uh, you can put them in categories. Vegetarian, tree hugger, horse's ass. Well, I would advise you to tell your conversation partner not to worry about anybody in the future having the same consciousness as he or she does. Yeah, well, again, that's not... I didn't tell them to worry about the same consciousness. I told them to worry about some kind of similar consciousness and that they, if you ruin the soil, their future, you're essentially soiling your own, in a sense. I mean, frankly, this all feels so familiar to me, anyway. I mean, it just feels like, yeah, we, we've gone over this and over this and over this, this human game. Ugh, silly assholes. I mean, yeah. So anyway, love, 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 finish up. That is not possible. Bye. Yeah, he's so obnoxious, so arrogant. They have a right to impose optimism, and the pessimist doesn't have any rights at all. They will force it upon him. And they call themselves decent. Disgusting. This chick looks way too young. <laughs> She's some model chick. Yeah. I was just Googling about this fell upon it. It is a bit of an interesting face. Yeah. Eyes are crooked though. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should talk. Uh, anyway. So, oh, that was fun, wasn't it? I was just, Jesus Christ. So, till the next time, and such, and so forth.